Well, thank you very much. What a wonderful room. You know, just standing here, I feel like doing an auction. Absolutely. <laughs> right? Can I have a bit, please? What can we sell? Well, this is fantastic arena. Hey, thanks very much for inviting me. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here today. This is very special for me. Um, I just like, actually, I didn't speak to Chris about what I ought to be talking about, so I've taken the liberty of talking about two of my passions. Now, one of them does happen, as has been mentioned. Uh, one of them is, indeed, a serious passion about our absolutely wonderful eucalypts of our very, very special wheat belt. My other passion is about land sales, and maybe someone here, I'm pleased to talk about land sales, because maybe, maybe someone here talk, wants to sell a bit of land, eh? Anyway, look, the truth is, selling land and our wonderful trees here and plants across the wheat belt are absolutely connected. And I can tell you both need help right here and now. Do you know that we have 160 eucalypts naturally occurring across our wheat belt? We have 160 different species of all wonderful eucalypts across our wheat belt, 160. That's a lot. Now of that 160, there's 32 approximately that we know that are in cultivation. In cultivation for all sorts of things such as ornamentals, reveg programs, oils and so on. 32. In that 32, there's a really, really special species. They're ornamentals. The funny thing about those ornamentals, what makes them really special, that they are amongst Australia's most favourite cultivars. And not only Australia's, but the globe's. There's eight very, very special eucalypts endemic to our wheat belt that are amongst Australia's most favourite planted plants. That's hard to say, but cultivars. Eight. But the funny thing is, do you see any here in Western Australia? Answers no. You see, you see a few, an odd patch or two that have been cultivated. These are incredible, credible plants, really special. Yet, I believe we take them for granted. I don't see them. Did I see any coming in the northern? No. Did I see any on wheat built farms, around the gardens, avenues, up the driveways? No. Where do you see them? How come they're in our top? Planted plants, that is hard, in Australia. Because they're mostly planted over east. You drive around all the towns over east, New South Wales, <coughs> South Australia, Victoria, what do you see? All our wonderful eucalypts all over there, they're not here. We're taking them for granted. And they're fantastic, and you know they can add real value, absolute real value to all our towns, no question about that and they can add real value to our farm asset. Now some of you will be wondering, well how can a few trees add a bit of value to a farm asset? Well they do, absolutely. So just back to how planting the right plants can add real value to the farm asset. This is really important, really, really important. I, I should explain how our farm values are set we actually don't sell farms anymore, we sell the farm business. That's what we sell. This is a serious business, selling farms. We actually sell the business and our farm values are made up very simply on what it can make, its return. And that return is based primarily on the management of the farm and the regimes that are employed. That determines price per hectare, no doubt related to production, etc. So that's pretty basic and pretty simple, but that's it. I'd just like to set a scene for you. We've got two farms. I'll call them A and B. Number A is one that's beautifully preserved, nicely treed, aesthetically wonderful. The reveg programs all working in enhancement with production. Best farmer practice employed. Farm B, which is over the road. I'll come over here, over the road. It's nice and open and bare. Not a tree to be seen, but a brilliant farmer very, very healthy soils, regimes first class. One of the best producers. Does farm A 
If brought to the market today, make more dollars per hectare than farm B? Answers no. Does farm B, if brought to the market the same time as farm A, make more money than farm B? Answers no. But it could do. Same as I could do. So the problem is, what incentive is there for a farmer to have a wonderful aesthetic farm, a future farm that's absolutely first class in the environment to ensure it's competent and productive for another thousand years? Because that's what we've got to be looking at here. What incentive is there? Well, I'll tell you, because there's a big one. Over the last 20 years, we've had three serious downturns downturns in agriculture. And I can tell you during those, it's very, very hard to attract an offer for a farm. And I can go back to just to 2012, if, if any office, when it was very, very tough, 2012, fortunately I've had two good seasons since then, confidence changed, commodities have changed, and agriculture is being looked at more seriously. But just back three years ago, we could take offers out to any farm across the wheat belt and it'd be snapped up. All farms across a lot of shires were for sale. That never got out, thank goodness. But that's where the wheat belt was at. Very, very fragile. But you know what? In 2012, Farm A would have got an offer. And those, those farmers, in Farm A, they could make a value decision and move on. And it's all relevant, isn't it? Price? Absolutely. Farm B, would he get an offer? Best regimes, top producer? Maybe, if the, if the neighbours were in a position to do it. That's the only place an offer would have come from. We've had three of these serious downturns that have lasted three to five years and we're going to get more. And we need to be prepared. We need to have our farms so that that asset can be realised, but importantly, so that the asset, asset, not just preserving the asset, but the asset value is maintained. It's critical today. I can assure you, to be in a position at any time to be able to attract an offer for a farm is a big thing. It's fantastic for that family who wants to move on for whatever reasons. Could be health, you, you, you've all been there and seen it. And they want to move on. And there's nothing more frustrating when it's been on the market for 12 months and they can't do it. We've got to get these farm assets right. I'll just sum up because by doing real good revision work, whatever it might be, and it doesn't have to be much, the farmer doing best practice farming by having a farm and a house yard aesthetically pleasing with shade and windbreaks, by doing all that, complementing the farm enterprise, these farms can actually be sold. Offers can be presented, and that's regardless of the farming economy at the time. That's the premium. And believe me, that is one hell of a premium. We have to preserve the farm asset and importantly, the farm asset value. It's critical in this industry. We have, the stakes are so high in this business, you know. To put a crop in today is millions of dollars for most farmers. And we're subject to the weather, farm economy, you know all that stuff. There's so much to do in managing our fabulous wheat belt. Okay. So I'll just say this, by planting the right plants in the right spot, and this may be only five plants, can make a big difference. And it definitely does make the difference between a sale and that. So farm selling and our wonderful eucalypts and plants across a wheat belt being taken for granted, the plants, can make a big difference. They are connected here. I mentioned the eight species that are Australia's favourite cultivars that you can hardly find here in the wheat belt, and particularly not on any farms, which is a total shame. And we've got to change that. You've got to treat our special plants as gold, because that's what they are. They are going to make the difference here, and we've got to get on with it. 
I'll tell you where they are, and this is Eucalyptus sinandra. It's just, just a special plant. Sinandra flowers, beautiful creamy flowers, matures to red. Uh, flowers at Christmas time. That's the other thing, all these flower at different times, so you've got birds all the time, everything's happening. Sinandra's one, Macandra, beautiful flowering tree, flowers in the three years, mainly from the southern wheat belt. Anyone from Narragin would know, Macandra. Grows in the forest there, right at the Harris Nature Reserve, Dragon Rocks Reserve, and all further south. <coughs> Crucis, we mentioned. Pleurocarpus, another one. Pleurocarpa. That's mostly a sand play one from the south. Also grows around any other. But a beautiful shrub, highly cultivated in Victoria, mainly for its floral, floral leaves, which are spectacular. Wonderful flower, white flowers. Rodanfer, of course, from Wallaroo. You know, it's, it's just a beautiful single budded plant. Beautiful red or creamy flowers. You really see it in cultivation, I don't know why. God, they just add so much to our wheat bill farms. And the other one, of course, is the local pyroformis. So there you go, which is the, the rose from out here at Dow Wollongu. Uh, Darren, sorry. Can I just talk about Erythronema? This is a real, real special plant. The type for Erythronema is out in the Meriden district. Do you see it in the township of Meriden? No. Yet this is the most one of the most spectacular plants that you can grow as an ornamental and on farm in a house yard. But I'll try and give you a description. Its old bark through the 12 months of the year is purple. So it goes from purple, it peels off to a beautiful cream. Then it becomes white as the season goes, grey, and then red and yellow. It is a sensational plant. It has beautiful red flowers and glaucous leaves. It is a stunner. And do I see it in cultivation in Western Australia? No. My favourite eucalypt of the wheat belt is a plant called Eucalyptus tenera. Tenera is just a sensational plant. It is absolutely my, my favourite. It's a small shrubby one. Flowers profusely, big, beautiful yellow flowers. Unknown in cultivation. It's, this is silly, real, real silly. Can make a big difference to all our farms, towns, avenues, whatever. And we don't cultivate it. I don't get it. I, and this has got to start. We really do have to start doing this and start selling our plants because they're gold. We've got to treat them as gold. We've got to put them on a pedestal. Imagine driving down up the Great Eastern Highway and seeing all these, all these special plants that we got. Fantastic. It will get the message out there. Every five out of every ten farmer's wife straight away will want to plant some. Hey, eh? we've got to get them out there. And don't, you know, I don't know if I've said this, but if if we planted every farmer just planted three, yeah, I did say this. Gee, it'd make a difference, uh, and it would grow. You know, it's, we've got to sell a message. It would grow. Doesn't have to be eucalypts. We can add a few acacias and whatever. And it just make a big difference to our farms, to the wheat belt. You know, you know what the average age of our wheat belt farms is? It's only 90, 90 years of age. We're so young. We've got to look after this wheat belt and, and start taking our focus, go out a thousand years. I've got a picture of what it'll be like in a thousand years and I absolutely like it. But we've got to start now and really get on with it. So there we go, I, and I've got to finish. I'm delighted with the sustainable work that our young farmers coming through are doing. I think that's really good, and of course the good work you people do. There's lots to do though, and we've got to get on with it. Keep at it, make sure you're on the front line. Thanks very much, thank you.